Now let the beat ride. Hey, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to High Chicago. Thank you guys for tuning in wherever you are, however you're listening. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Uh, as usual, it's your boy, Sean. Uh, I'm here to have a real conversation about some real shit with three of the wildest human beings I have ever come across in my entire life. Uh, before we dive into that, let me see how everybody's doing real quick, right? MC, how are you? I am one tired ass motherfucker. Oh, okay. Man. I started my day Language. at 4 a.m. Is that on I started my day at 4 a.m. <laughs> okay. and it ended at about 6 p.m. And I've been going like this the last few days and I'm tired. <laughs> you look exhausted. Like those bags under your eyes are obvious. I know. I know. Let's but they look good though. <laughs> I appreciate you uh, coming through. Let me check in on my boy, Joshua Vincent. Uh, JV, what's up, homie? How you feeling? First of all, don't put ever tell everybody my girl. Second of all, I'm <laughs> <laughs> ah, trying to Google me after this episode. I'm not trying to get canceled. Fact. No, I'm doing good, man. I'm chilling. I'm up in Wisconsin, you know, uh, winter. Speaking uh, of Wisconsin, you owe me $20 for the Green Bay Packers game. <laughs> wow, it's so funny. John Allen ain't shit. He be up here betting money for people. Oh, I go, oh, but the Bears, the Bears. I want my 20 damn dollars. How you doing? <laughs> I don't remember that. You got receipts? Mm-hmm. I got the text. Do I need to show it? Or do don't show it right now. Don't show it right now. Not right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, continue. Continue. Um, Aaron, Aaron, what's up, big homie? How you feeling? Uh, black. That's for sure. You look it. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm here for it. I like the channel, like the T-shirt. Super random fact. Um, for those of you guys that are watching the show randomly, uh, JV told us today that he's owned the hoodie he's wearing right now for the last 15 years. Have anybody ever owned a piece of uh, clothing for 15 years straight? Let me know. Yep, and I grew yeah. into it. Yeah. I grew into That's it. Me. Oh my god, that's it. You're ridiculous, bro. Um, 15 years, but thank you guys for tuning in, man. Please subscribe, please share, please leave comments, please leave reviews. Uh, we love you guys for tuning in. Uh, let's go ahead and dive into what's good today. So, the question I have for I'll start with Aaron, right? Yes, it's as, as adults, yes, do sir. you believe there's a time and a place for everything, or do you think that because we're adults, we can just do whatever the fuck we want whenever we want to? <laughs> No, I believe there's a time and a place for everything because we are adults and we should comport ourselves as such. Okay, so let's take that concept for a second, right? Because the reason why I asked that question is mm-hmm. because I don't know if you guys have heard about the the incident at the, the True Kitchen restaurant in Dallas mm-hmm. um, where the owner, Kevin Kelly, basically, uh, Black-owned restaurant, by the way, right? Mm-hmm. got so fed up with certain customers that he went in front of the entire restaurant and said, hey, if you don't like my rules and the way I want my place to run, uh, you can get the fuck out because I don't need your money. Now, <laughs> what caused that, though, was the fact that he went through three different tables and had to ask them to stop twerking <laughs> in his restaurant, which, you know, um, he said he created for the culture and created for uh, Black people to have a nice place to go to. Mm-hmm. Right, but based on the type of music he was playing, the customers in that moment felt the need to twerk. Right, <laughs> so, wow. so my question is, and JB, we'll start with you. Right, okay. do you have a problem with the way he a- approached things by telling the entire restaurant that they didn't, he didn't need their money, and they can get the fuck out, or do you have more of a problem with the behavior of the customers? <laughs> I'm like sixty forty on this one, right? I have a problem with the way he addressed the situation. He didn't, it's, it's, it's a way you say things, right? Okay. He didn't necessarily have to go in front of the entire restaurant, cursing people out, telling them how this is for the culture and this is how black women are supposed to act, this is how black people are supposed to do. Mm-hmm. He did the utmost. He did the very most. All he had to say was, if I was him, Hey, y'all, I appreciate y'all business, especially in these times. It's a pandemic. Mm -hmm. I can't have y'all twerking because I got waiters and waitress trying to get in and out. And we want to keep some type of social distance. Plus, this is a restaurant. It's not the club. So enjoy yourself. But what I read was he actually, he he went to his tables multiple times. And like, like he Mm -hmm. asked them politely first. Okay. And when the politeness stopped, 
he said, fuck it, I had enough. I'm fed up. This is what it is. I so mean, he, he tried that approach. It, okay, well, if that's what happened, because see, remember, I only saw the video, right? Okay. So if that's what mm-hmm. happened, right? If, if he actually went to the table and was like, okay, Shaquita, I need y'all to come in. <laughs> come on, man. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I mean, damn. Can I name be Veronica? Excuse me, excuse my bad. Okay, ladies, can y'all, you know, stop, you know, body yada yada, you like calm down. Okay, if he did that, right? And they still was like, F what he talking about, it's body yada yada till I die. Oh. That's what happened. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know it's Dallas, you know it's Dallas. If that's what happened, then I mean, hey, it's this restaurant. He say he tired of y'all throwing y'all asses in the circle in the middle of the restaurant and sit y'all asses down. Because listen, one real thing, Sean, when I go to the casino. And they play body yaddy yaddy. I am not on the sizzling seven machine talking about some yaddy yaddy yaddy. My ass. Yes, you are though, which is crazy. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you just told a lie. Right. You know what? I'm cool. I'm just saying I ain't never seen my grandma twerking when they play Nick, uh, Nicki Minaj or anybody else at the casino when we try to get our uh, money. So. So, you, so you're saying that his approach was fine at that point? Yeah, at that point. Yeah, if he told them, you know, hey, calm down. His approach was fine. I would just say, I think people lost the message when he started going into what black people are supposed to do. This is a black establishment, da, 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 because then now you get into the conversation of uh, respectability politics and all of that. And the, the, the message is lost. Had he just said, hey, sit y'all asses down. I need y'all to stop twerking. Yeah, we want to have good vibes, but this is not the club. I think it would have been cool. But when you tell people to get the fuck out, miss that and the other. You could go to a club and twerk the wrong way and get kicked out. I've seen it before. Oh, well, okay, Mary Claire, how you doing? Tell us something. (laughs) What the hell? (laughs) What kind of club you go to, you get kicked out for twerking? Don't worry about that. I don't want you showing up. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So, MC, you, you agree with JV's thought process? Um, well, I mean, for me, there's no 60 40. I'm on a very clear line of this man owns this establishment. He built it with his own heart and hands. So he should be able to feel however he wants to feel and implement whatever he wants. You know, I think it would have been a stronger approach if you went up to those individuals who were doing things you did not like and told them like i'm sorry i don't allow this and if you do it again that's it you gotta go but he and then did. You remember literally... he did that and then he got fed up when they didn't listen he did but the problem is when somebody doesn't listen to you after you implement something you have to follow through with your action otherwise it's not a strong lead yeah. you can't go up to five people and say stop talking stop talking stop talking and then make an announcement about people stop talking because now you're affecting the people who did nothing wrong yeah you know like it's a stronger approach when you go up to that person and say hey i already told you don't do that shit so get out of my restaurant right now i don't want your money go get up and go like that is a stronger stance than making yourself look unprofessional. I mean, I don't think he'd look that unprofessional, but you know, everyone has a different opinion about what professionalism looks like. But from somebody who built their own business with their heart and hands, you know, like I said, that is his pride and joy. He probably thrives off of that. So he probably, he took it the way he wanted to and he showed them that. So that's all that matters. So Aaron, they both hate the approach. Mm-hmm. that he took i i actually like that approach i'll tell you why in a minute but do you hate his approach or do you, were you cool with it do you understand it um i understand it but i'm not cool with it what no like so think about it this way um i think all of us have been in some form of management correct yeah. and yeah. we've had employees that may or may not work as hard as they need to mm-hmm. you're not going to address your entire staff and say hey all of y'all got to pick it up. You're going to address that one person. And if that one person isn't getting the stuff done, you're going to have some sort of reprimandation for that person and not for your entire staff. It's going to backlash. But if you That's have, t- if you have 10 employees, right, that work for you total, right, and mm-hmm. four out of 10 ain't doing what the fuck you need them to do, at that point, shit, let me just tell everybody what the fuck this is because this ain't what you think it is. Right, but the problem is that he, he added a little bit of disrespect. If he would have stopped at the I don't need your money and get the fuck out, if he would have stopped just like right before that, I don't think he has any sort of backlash on Twitter. I don't think there's anybody over here disagreeing with his approach, disagreeing with the things that he said. But it was that it was that last little piece that he added on, that little bit of salt that he sprinkled at the top. <laughs> that kind of that kind of fucked up his entire mm-hmm. message. That's where it got lost. 
But but it yeah. seemed like on Twitter though, Sean, real quick, it just seemed like on Twitter when I saw people saying how upset they were, it seemed like they were more so upset at the fact about him uh, addressing, uh, talking about like well, black women shouldn't be doing this and this, that, and the other. Because he just like, black men too, though. That video. Yeah. Yeah. So so it seemed like that's what people were more so upset with from 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 what I read. And then even when I asked people about it, I was like, okay, so what was wrong with what he said? I was talking to a younger guy, and he was like, oh, see, that's respectability politics. You can't be playing, uh, you can't be serving house slushies and being playing back that ass up and talking about people can't, you know, you know, juke or whatever the case may be. Yeah. And then like I, I was confused because I'm thinking like there's a lot of places that you go to that you hear music but I don't just see people you know dancing unless it is that type of a place so yeah it's kind of weird that you know people are so upset (laughs) yeah yeah I mean mean, you could could go really anywhere honestly you could go really anywhere and they're playing music like I mean you're on the elevator at a hotel and they're playing you know maybe not NASA but they're playing music (laughs) I've never heard somebody say oh shit it's your old guy I'm gonna shoot this motherfucker up at the holiday (laughs) inn like I'm just (laughs) you know I mean you know this is why I was asking Sean earlier you know did anyone find out the song that was playing, or maybe the songs specifically that were playing when these incidents took place, because you know, I some people, some, the the comments I was seeing on Twitter were, "Well, you shouldn't have played that music in the first place because you mm, set yourself I up." I did see a lot of that. Yeah, but you know, I have a problem with that because yeah. you should be allowed to play whatever music you want in your exactly. establishment. That does not mean that you are enticing people to do things that you don't like. You know, that that goes along with a lot of scenarios. But a lot of people think, you know, oh, I hear back that ass up. I'm going to back my ass up. You know, I'm going to sit here and do whatever I want. Now, you can make that decision as an adult, but you got to take the chances of possibly getting kicked out of a restaurant, you know, the chances in life you take. And I think to hell with with being nice, man, to be honest with you, bro. Like, again, if it's multiple tables. Right. I think so. Let me let me start at the beginning. I think every business should have every right to tell customers what they want and how they feel, no matter what. Right. Mm, there they, has they to should. be some sort of filter, man. You can't just go out yeah. here cursing yeah. people out, bro. But the because then is- you're gonna you're gonna ruin your business because mm-hmm. the biggest mm-hmm. part of business is customer service. You have but to at it. the same time. You know those people who are disrespecting your business. You customers that act a fool. You shouldn't let them win by continuing to give them the business you serve no, and no. they're getting away with it. No, for well, sure. Kick them that. out. Yeah, yeah, kick them out. But, I don't... But it's a- it's the way you go about it, though. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, both you and Sean work in customer service. I don't think if somebody coming to your place of business, I don't think you can say, okay, hold up, bitch, you got to get the fuck up out of here. But, but the, 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 right, the right to, to yeah, the I right to should be there. To. Yeah, uh. I literally wanted to be able to say that today, Sean. And because <laughs> I have that filter of my boss in between me and the situation, it's so frustrating. I wanted to tell this lady, get the fuck out of my store. Some customers are super disrespectful. Get- some customers really are, are assholes, right? And, and you, don't, you don't like that and you don't want that about people, but like it happens. But because yeah. you work in a, for a corporation, right? Or you're a restaurant owner or whatever, like you have to mm-hmm. like hold yourself back when the customer's not holding themselves back at all. They say what they want, mm-hmm. when they want, and nine times out of 10, they get away with it because the customer thinks they're right. But then Sean, again, don't, you, don't you hate when they entice you and they, they keep saying more because they know you have to keep quiet to a certain level? And I that's why, because he's, a, he's an owner. Trying? He's an owner, right? It's his restaurant. Um, I'm completely okay with him saying, hey, if you guys don't like the way I'm running my shit, bounce. Like, that I took, that took the balls. You, you did, you yeah, know, I mean, we never said them. that. We didn't like that. But you said his approach was wrong. Extent. Well, for me, cut, it wasn't cut out the, the curse. Just the second part. Yeah, for me, when I say his approach was wrong, for me, I, again, I don't know where MC and Aaron stand on this, but for me specifically, I thought he his message got lost when he started going in the deep end about, you know, being a black business owner and this is for my people. And I said certain standards for my people, this, that, and the other. Because now you're trying to define what blackness is. And I think that's what people took from that. When you go through the thread of, of the conversation, you got a lot of people talking about, oh, well, how he gonna say this about black women? It's always men trying to tell women how to act like it, it ended up being they heard something completely different than what Mm. I heard from what I heard was, listen, 
I want us to vibe well. I want to play some good music, but I, I need y'all to sit y'all asses down. And I'll tell a funny story. You, Everybody know Peppies and Matson Before, before <laughs> COVID, if you're not from Chicago, let me tell y'all a quick story. It's this Mexican oh, restaurant no. in the predominantly black community. Yep. And one time, the whole town went out to Pepsi, Peppies, and they were I playing Chicago. They was playing Chicago juke music. You, you, I was there with you, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they were playing Chicago juke music, and I mean, everybody was having a great time. But what I did not see, Sean, I did not see somebody stand on top of the table talking about bounce that ass, bounce that ass while they was eating the taco. I did not see that. Correct. See? And that's the thing. That's the thing. People were eating, having a good time. Hey, girl. Hey, homie. Having a great time. But nobody was bounce that ass, bounce that ass, eating the taco. That did not happen. For whatever reason, these people in Dallas thought that they could, you know, adi 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 all over this man's table, and he wasn't having it. And so, hey, you know what? If he say get the fuck out, that's cool. My issue was is when he started going into all the blackness and this, that, and the other, because now your message is getting watered down because people are starting to feel like, oh, well, now you're attacking black people. Now you're trying to act like a black, you know, if somebody twerk, now they're not black enough, or whatever the case may be, or they yeah. disrespecting the race, and now it just becomes something that maybe it shouldn't. Yeah, I, I agree with JV on that level. You know, it's one thing to get that message across about your business, your rules and professionalism and respect in general public. And then there's a difference between expressing your morals and values to other people because not everyone can always agree with you. That's okay, but it's the feedback you're gonna get. So then that begs the question, Aaron, right? Why do you, in your mind, why do you think they were comfortable doing that there? To be honest with you, I do not know. I'm I'm not a guy from Texas. Uh, maybe Mary Claire could speak more to this about the Texas <laughs> urban communities down there. But I just I know that if it was me, you, JV, and everybody we went to school with, and we were at that restaurant and they were playing that music, I don't think we're on top of tables twerking. <laughs> I don't. We had that. some ratchet motherfuckers at our school. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't want to say somebody name, but I can't. <laughs> Do you think, okay, so Aaron, let me ask you this then. Do you think it being a Black-owned establishment played any part in that? To be honest with you, probably. They felt like, hey, this is my brother. He's for me. That means I can do whatever I want, and he's not going to reprimand me because it's all covered in this umbrella of Blackness. I think alcohol played more of a factor. That than too. It. I think people were drunk as hell at this brunch, and you playing some ratchet-ass music, and they forced quick second forgot they wasn't at the club not for a quick second because he asked them to stop and then they yeah, kept wasn't going anyway this was so stop, stop trying to justify the action okay for a yeah, long yeah, time to justify something because we all know how messy that can get right i'm just saying for a long ass moment they forgot that they weren't at the club Very long and long. i think that's where things went haywire and i heard he talked to certain one certain people twice like yeah, exactly. yeah multiple months. times bro that's that's why he got like, so frustrated to the point where he addressed everybody yeah i support his idea again i support him i, I, I his approach again i just conclude by saying his approach with the blackness i think that's where people lost his message but overall i feel like this anybody that lives in chicago you haven't been to any of them hood ass chicken restaurants they tell you straight up once we serve you your chicken ain't no damn refund you can come in there and be like it's a feather on my wing fuck you talking about i ain't finna give you shit you what's know, with his voice like man like, i mean <laughs> oh you said, what's with the voice? Yeah. that's the voice on 71st and, uh, let's not do that voice again. 71st and Stony. i've been there before Oh, okay. But the point that I'm making is, yeah. that's what they do, and you don't hear and you don't see them all on Twitter. So. No, but because I think that most people know that there's a time and a place for everything. Yeah. Right. Which is the original question that I posed, right? Um, mm -hmm. And again, I think that I'm cool with his approach. I'm cool with why he approached things the way he did. I'm cool with what he said completely. I think more businesses, again, should say that because customers got a line, and sometimes you got to check the fuck out of them. Um, in a way that they might not appreciate, but it's needed. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. You know what I'm saying? Um, cool. So uh, I appreciate you guys for this conversation. Uh, anybody that's listening, please let us know where you stand on this true kitchen situation. Was the owner's approach accurate? Was the behavior bogus? Uh, were both parties at fault, right? Who do you Would you most? be twerking? Yes, because somebody somewhere out there listening, somewhere would reenact this behavior but will you own that shit you know you because we already know you we're, we're, we're trying to slander you but it is what it is i mean right <laughs> she's a texan now 
<laughs> call in, tell us, hey, I'm gonna go to call the in. Did you say call yeah. in? Who the, are we a radio show now? <laughs> the hell is going on? Hey, no way, I'm just saying, we're we gonna go ahead. call in. My cell phone gonna, call in. All right, put your me, number out there, my guy. All right, tell me where is it acceptable <laughs> to go twerk your ass when, when it ain't a damn club? Let me know. So I can go. A barbecue, my dad. I will hit all of y'all up in the comments, and I will drop suggestions of other places that are not clubs where you can. A cookout. I will. I will totally do that. She gonna say a library. (laughs) (laughs) School. It's it's, it's a common place for everything. So very clear. You would. You would be one of the women twerking at the restaurant. Is that what you're saying? Wild. You know, I, I I'm not gonna sit here and lie. I've done stuff like that before when oh. it's not necessarily a club. Hold up, hold up. Um, what's what's the wildest somebody... shit you've done in a restaurant? Oh, we not... oh. Yeah, this is a new podcast mm-hmm. now. What's up? I, I've <laughs> gotten, I, I've gotten on top of tables before at a I've restaurant. At, at a restaurant, heathen, bro. Oh. You fucking man. Yeah. Everybody uh, no home training. Let me turn you up. What's up? No home training. No home training. Mary didn't teach you well. Oh, <laughs> no, Mary taught her well. She just didn't listen. That's all. Yeah. Um. No, but if I've always, if somebody ever says like, "Ma'am, please stop," or "Get off the table," "Get off that shit," or whatever, Ma'am, I'll, this I'll is I'll a list. I'm not gonna try to fight it and be like, "No, my twerking is more important and more important than whatever you're trying to do." I wouldn't be that rude. I'm looking I'm at you sorry. sideways because you were on the side of the guy, the owner. <laughs> yet you I'm so were confused. the culprit. Of doing the same bullshit ass behavior. Uh, I can't explain it either, but you know, it's something inside of me. You hear a certain song, you start shaking your ass. Wait, 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 wait. Let me make sure I understand what you're saying. You're saying you were at a <laughs> restaurant. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Let me make sure I get the synopsis, word of the day. You're telling me <laughs> you were at a restaurant, not a club, yeah. not a strip club. You at a whole ass restaurant, a whole ass Olive Garden. Oh <laughs> I they wish play. it was an Olive Garden. Have you ever been in one of those places? It's so dead. And they play some <laughs> music. Focus on the point. You, they play some music. And you just got on the table and was like, "Hey, bitch!" And you just got it cracked. That's crazy. So everything that Mary Claire said for the previous 15, 20 minutes just that shit's null and void at this point. <laughs> right, it's like null and void. Her point just. And bumped. ladies and gentlemen, that's how I'm gonna spice up the end of this episode. <laughs> oh my god! Can we in our next episode? We're just gonna have a story stories of Mary Claire because we learn something new about her ass every episode. I swear to God, working on Taco Bell tables. God right. damn. Right. Um, I don't get that house. ass place. No I sir. She's working for McDouble's. I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> Got the crazy oh, cases going up. God damn. Oh, no. Let me find out she twerking for the chip Popeye's chicken sandwich. I'm- I've done it in a liquor store one time and the guy gave me his discount on a bottle. Oh wow. You are so you twerking at Joel Osco. You out just of have no bounds. Disgraceful. It was 20% off a bottle of tequila. You think I was gonna pass that up? Hell no. You twerk for, so you twerk for eight dollars, is what you so saw. You, yeah, basically. Man. If that's what it was, have more standards for yourself. <laughs> like that. Okay, so Mary Claire, what's up, dear? Come on, twerk. Oh, you like what you gonna do? Can we get a little twerk something before you go? Might as well for the viewers. Well, cash up you eight. Cash up you eight dollars right now. Yeah, if y'all want to peek, you can look at my OnlyFans. So I'm just oh, like, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Lord. John on, on on that get the note, funds. Get the funds. Wrap, wrap this episode. <laughs> wrap up. this up, Sean. Wrap it up. Aaron, you got any final thoughts for us, big homie? Um, don't twerk on tables at restaurants. No matter what restaurant you're in. <laughs> Some wild shit. I'm gonna follow it up by saying I 100 percent agree with everything Aaron just said. And Mary Claire, you are something else. I don't even know how to describe you at this point. Other than that, you are just something else. Uh, JV? Mary Claire, you are a hot-ass mess. Jesus. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, she wanted to be a hot mess. A hot-ass mess. Not like, a hot you were girl, born a hot-ass hot mess, mess, which is, that's crazy. You should just put hot mess, like, over her screen. Can, that's what you're <laughs> just from now on. Hot Chicago featuring hot-ass mess, Mary Claire. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mary Claire, you got any final thoughts? Fucking wild ass. Um, don't forget to wish me a happy birthday this Sunday. Don't forget about little old me over here. Cause I won't be twerking this Sunday because you know COVID and you social distance. Your, you twerk be working. You can twerk now. Hours. You can twerk I mean, by myself, uh, that's kind of boring. It's a little I, weird. Can, 
Can invite, I put some music that on old ass man over. No, I'm going to go ahead and opt out of this one. Aaron, bring us home. <laughs> okay. Hey, guys, make sure you follow us on Twitter and on Instagram at HotChicago312. Also, try to find us on any of our podcast platforms. You can find it through the link in the description. And that's it. Peace. Till next time, Mary Claire, you're wild as fuck. Come on, Mary Claire. <laughs> we, still we still recording. We still recording. Yeah. I, I started.